How long does it take for a black hole to evaporate? Let's answer this by looking at a question from the 2007 International Physics Olympia that is worth a staggering 1.1 marks. This is part three of the black hole questions from this Olympiad. And if you're interested in learning how to derive this equation, have a browse from my channel, Z Physics. I would also like to thank Just Calculus for collaborating on this video. Well, let's have a look at solving this equation. It is showing us that the mass of a black hole is decreasing. Imagine that we're starting with a black hole of mass m. Its mass is steadily decreasing and decreasing until it is finally evaporated at time t star. Now, looking at this equation, we can use separation of variables to solve this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by a factor of dt. So, let's do this. I'm going to have a dt here. Then I'm also going to have a dt across here. Now, I can do one of my favorite things in calculus, and that is to be cancelling terms out of an equation. So, this term can go and this term can go. Okay, well, now what we can do is we can move all the terms that have an m onto the left-hand side of the equation, and then we'll also be in integrating one side with respect to m and one side with respect to dt. Okay, well, if we have an m squared here, what we're left with is m squared dm, which will then be equal to minus c4 multiplied by h divided by 16g squared. All of these are absolute constants, by the way, so neither of them depend neither on time nor on the mass. And then we have a factor of dt. So let's integrate. I'm going to integrate this with respect to m and this side with respect to t. Now, what will the boundaries of my integration be? So let's start at t is equal to zero, like so. So t will go, let's just write t will go from zero all the way up to the time at which the black hole has evaporated t star. Now, how does the mass vary during that time? Our initial mass of the black hole is just capital m and our final mass of the black hole will be zero because it has completely evaporated it is gone so this uh, boundary here will be zero okay now luckily for us these things are relatively straightforward to integrate so m squared dm with a boundary of zero m this will be equal to zero minus m cubed over 3 and this will then be equal to minus c4h over 16g squared and then we have a factor of t squared then we also have minus 0 which I'm not going to write. Okay now we almost have an expression all we need to do is just rearrange this expression for t star and there we have it we have an expression for the evaporation time of a black hole. Let's have some fun with this equation. Let's plug in some values and actually calculate the evaporation time of a black hole and compare it with something like, mm, I don't know, how about the age of the universe? So, in order to do that, I'm going to need a typical mass of a black hole. I'm just going to take about five solar masses. So, this will be 16. Now, the mass of the sun is about 2 times 10 to the power of 30. So, this will be equal to 5 times 2.0 times 10 to the power of 30. 30, and this is now cubed, so I already know I'm going, to get big, big, I'm going to be getting a pretty large number because I'm cubing this, multiplied by g squared, now this is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11, then I'm going to be squaring that, let's divide that by c to the power of 4, which is equal to about 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8, and that's raised to the power of 4, multiplied by Planck's constant, which is approximately 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. Now, if we plug this into a scientific calculator, we are going to get a humongous number, which is about somewhere around 4.4 times 10 to the power of 72 seconds. Now, this is such a humongous number. Just for comparison, the age of the universe is about 4.4, funnily around the same number, times 10 to the power of 17, which is absolutely amazing. So this is this many times greater than the age of the universe. Here is something very interesting. 
when we set up differential equation in mathematics, we're often really interested in the beauty of the differential equation or the beauty of the solution. Now, in physics, sometimes when you come up with a result and uh, the result is incredibly simple and beautiful, you have that feeling that it's probably correct, but the main difference is that it has to be checked with experiment and compared to nature. But one of the facts that still gives me goosebumps is that you can solve a differential equation on your board and you can make an accurate prediction for, for instance, the evaporation time of a black hole. You can predict a particle and you can take um, an energy and tell an experimental physicist to look for it and very often they find that and it all starts on a blackboard. Okay guys, hopefully you've enjoyed applying calculus to the physics of black holes. I would like to once again thank Black Pen, Red Pen and Just Calculus for hosting me on this channel. It is truly the best place to learn calculus, so make sure that you're subscribed. If you're interested more in physics, have a browse from my channels. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video and enjoy your calculations.